Hey, what's up, dudes? Kublai Khan here, and welcome to announcement sort of idea talk time. Yeah, I don't really have a term exactly for what this is. It's kind of amusing, and it's something that I wanted to discuss because of permadeath and survival. I mentioned this during the intro of our survival roleplay stuff, and I feel like I want to flesh out my thought process a little bit for you. So... Basically, we're going to talk about how survival, I think, will do everything that permadeath did for our channel, except it will do it better. So, this is why. And let me first explain what permadeath did for our channel. Permadeath created generally three things. The main one was that it created an interesting show. It was scary. We were worried about the character. It was something that made it bigger and more interesting when the character won and when the character lost. It was something that made it more fun to watch, in my opinion. The second thing was that we created builds that people could continue to submit. So the idea was like, oh, we could cycle through these builds now because our character died. So we can put a new person in. That makes perfect sense. It allows us to quickly go through it. And then the final thing was that permadeath was a search into engine optimization thing that made us different. It was a niche. It allowed us to target our content and allowed us to target our keywords. Good strategy for growing a channel. So I looked at this, I'm like, okay, rocking it. Now it's been a couple months of me doing permadeath for Skyrim and doing it for Fallout. And what I have found is that it is not yet really doing the things that I thought it was going to be doing. Let me explain. In the case of the actual better story, I feel like it's made the stories less interesting because having a character on extra hard difficulty or survival difficulty is different than having a character on normal difficulty, right? Most enemies are scary in video games. Let's take Dark Souls, which is a game where you can restart whenever you want. Uh, those enemies are scary at first because they're hard, because they're difficult to defeat. Normal mode in Fallout 4 made less difficult enemies. So with enemies that were easier to beat, we now have less fear in the character. True, there was a much bigger loss if the character died. However, the actual dying of a character was shown to be something that was more negative in the actual enjoyment of the show that I saw this in analytics and I saw it mentioned in comments down below. So because of that, I aimed the character to play more cautiously to try to keep them alive. More cautious is somewhat less fun, really. Like... It doesn't necessarily come off as, oh, I'm being clever, as much as it comes off as being, oh, I'm being safe. And, you know, there are times for that. I felt that that was kind of the theme of the episodes once we got to a certain point, that we would either be like, oh, this isn't a scary guy at all, but if they were scary, we gave them a huge amount of attention and birth, kind of wide birth, kind of avoidance of what was going on. So that wasn't as cool to me. Uh, the second thing was that with the cycling of builds, this is incredibly unpredictable. If a character was to die, suddenly I needed to know what build to play next. And, well, on the subreddit, it wasn't a lot of casual voting. I'd look at the subreddit and see builds that have, like, two votes on them. And I was one of the voters on those builds. And it was like, well, there isn't really any clear distinction about what the community wanted. So if there's no clear distinction about what the community wants, I was like, well, I'll ask you guys in a video. And I did those little poll things. And you guys were very clear in what you wanted. And that was great. But that's really hard to do without being like, hey, guess what? A character is going to die. I started doing this in response to like automatron, in response to things like uh, the survival, where let's talk about builds and we know that it's going to come out at a certain time so we could be prepared for it. And that was something that was nice, that we could, we could make these things and you guys voted out in much bigger numbers. So it was much more clear on what you wanted. And that's what I want to maintain. It creates this interactivity that is hard to do with permadeath. So that was another problem we were running into. And on the, the final note with the SEO related thing, the permadeath niche, although popular, isn't actually permadeath. And this is my theory, or excuse me, this is a hypothesis with some evidence. And the reason why I say this is because a permadeath game isn't a permadeath genre. Permadeath is a mechanic. The genre is roguelike or roguelite. Or it's a, it's a game choice, like in hardcore mode in Call of Duty. Or in, or the veteran one, or I forget what it was, but hardcore mode's another example I talked about in a recent episode. Um, in Battlefield 4, having hardcore modes in multiplayer made it more difficult, higher damage, this kind of thing. Um, 
And that's kind of fits with the permadeath idea where it's an increased difficulty of the game. You see this and you realize that people don't really search permadeath though. They search for like first person shooters, a genre, right? Uh, role playing games, a genre, but permadeath isn't a genre. And so we weren't really being put in too many places. Like permadeath games are a thing, but people don't really search for them quite the same way. And Skyrim being a rogue light kind of thing when we apply permadeath or Fallout 4, I actually, I saw in comments that people weren't really being like, oh yeah, I agree with that. They were kind of disagreeing with that description. And then when I was seeing the search results, I could see that being reflected there too. So it wasn't really doing what I wanted for the channel. Yeah, we were kind of pointing in a direction, but we weren't necessarily pointing in the genre target. We were pointing at a certain subsection of a bunch of genres, right? Like certain different things, because you could do permadeath in Super Mario. You could do permadeath in everything. And that's a subset of a lot of different genres. And that wasn't necessarily what was making the show or the channel grow. It was a much bigger net that was really weirdly pointed if I was looking for a target audience. So that really didn't do it either. Now, survival mode. Let's talk about this idea, and this is where it's expanded. First of all, in the case of what it does with permadeath, it still maintains that fear because it's hard because we had a bed that we saved in. So we're like, oh no, we need to get back to a bed. I'm sick. That's another thing. The antibiotic situation where we can now increase the difficulty so that challenges are much more terrifying. So it becomes more interesting when we solve a problem. There's more creativity involved and less just sort of brute force. Sure, some of this brute force and creativity might be a bunch of different deaths and trials, but it still is scary and still is worrisome because there is an actual cost to death that is, you know, manageable enough and interesting because, enough because we can then keep the characters living longer, too. So that was another thing that I kind of I felt in relation to it. Besides the idea of that, I think it's more interesting to need to eat and need to sleep and need to drink because it's, you know, it's like suddenly I'm trying to do, like say, a Corvega plant thing in Fallout 4, but a character is now sick and can't do it. Oh, no. <laughs> like... What do we have to go somewhere else. We have to do something else because we can't complete the mission now. That's interesting to me. And I think it's a more interesting show, period. Then, uh, in the case of survival, we don't have to worry about that predictability cycle. We know that in the case of the child of Adam Ghoul, that when they hit, like, 20 fusion cores, that we're, going, we're getting close to the end of the character. So then we can start talking about the build. And it's not this awkward moment of me revealing that a character is finished or died kind of thing. And I like that better. And it seems more smoothly and because the subreddit wasn't casually voted on this b voting thing worked better so that's a much clear indicator to me on what's going to be happening and what build we should do so i like that too and then the final thing in the case of survival this is a little bit more of a stretch and will require some experimentation so survival mode is more popular than permadeath and fallout 4 because survival mode is currently the new popular thing that's not crazy that you can see that right now survival genre or like you hear survival horror is a term often used too it's this idea of where you have resources and you have to manage your resources and you have to figure out the environment and the enemies are tough there aren't a lot of saves necessarily or if they are they have some like cost associated to them and these things that make this difficulty exist that are not arbitrarily put there but are put there as a game mechanic Dead Space did this. Um, Dark Souls, excuse me, I burped. Dark Souls does this. Bioshock does this. These are games that I've played on this channel, and the Bioshock and Dark Souls are very old. So if you see them, I'm a little, it's a little cringy for me. <laughs> but if you, yeah, uh, Dead Space I love. Anyway, um, these these are genres. These are things that when we play the game, we focus kind of on. It's easier to connect and go, oh yeah, like I get what's going on within the Kublai Khan channel. You know, it's a more of a focus of these character stories because I think it's really interesting when we have to deal with these mechanics. So, that's why I think survival mode is worth really considering, not necessarily removing permadeath. I think permadeath is still has value. I think that survival as a potential genre, as a potential thing of like what we're going to focus on with Fallout 4 has a lot of extra value that will create better longevity more interesting shows and just better interactivity with you 
And that's, those are all things that to me as a channel content creator, right? Oh yeah, absolutely. I think a better SEO, I think it's going to have better interactivity with my community. And I think it's going to be better just to watch. It's a no brainer. Uh, like I said, permadeath, I still think it's valuable. I still think we should do some permadeath. I also think that it should be something that is less focused because it's not necessarily doing what I wanted it to do for the channel. Survival might not either, but at the moment, I think it could do more. So anyway, those are my two cents, five cents, ten dollars. I don't know. Uh, it's been a lot a lot longer than two cents, I would say, of a video. So that's different. Anyway, dudes, if you have any questions, hit me up down below. I'm happy to listen. Of course, if I was unclear about something and there's enough people who seem to be struggling with it, I'll make a video that kind of follows up, explaining that certain point a little bit more. And of course... Thank you so much for watching. It was a total joy to have you here. If you liked what you saw, please leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button underneath me. And of course, may the ground rise to meet your feet. May the wind always be at your back. And may the sun shine warmly on your sexy, sexy face. Thanks again, dude.